the lecture on trigonometric equations. This time it's in the radian form. We have already discussed the idea of solving trigonometric equation in degree form. Radians is an alternative form. It's another unit for measuring angles. What is the relationship between degrees and radians? This green box says it all. 180 degrees is pi radians. Double the angle, 360 is 2 pi. Half of 180 is 90, therefore it is pi by 2 and so on. Now, whenever you have to solve a trigonometric equation, you need to take care of two things. First thing first, that is anti-clockwise angles are positive, clockwise angles are negative. The reason anti-clockwise angles are positive is that everything in nature goes anti-clockwise. Whether it's the motion of electrons around the orbit, whether it's the motion of planets around the sun and so on. So that is why keeping in mind that math is the closest thing to nature among all the sciences. It's the mother of all sciences. That is why ASTC is labeled this way in an anti-clockwise direction. The first quadrant, the second, the third, the fourth. In the first quadrant, all three trig ratios are positive. Second quadrant, only sine is positive. Third quadrant, only tangent is positive. Fourth quadrant only cosine is positive. Now, the relation between theta and alpha. What is theta? The required angle in any question. It could be theta, it could be x, it could be angle A. What is alpha? Alpha is the basic angle, the acute angle with the x axis. In the first quadrant, theta is alpha. Second quadrant, theta is 180 minus alpha. Third quadrant, theta is 180 plus alpha. Fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus alpha. Since we are dealing with radians, therefore, instead of 180, we are writing pi. Instead of 360, we are writing 2 pi. If we are solving these angles in decimals, we should know that pi is 3.142, 2 pi is 6.284, and you can have a similar diagram like this. Now, let's look at all these worked examples, of course, one by one. We can divide the trigonometric equations under two categories. The first category is the angles would be such that they would be asking you the answer in terms of pi. That means the angles would be related to either 30 degrees or 45 degrees or 60 degrees or multiples of that. 150 degrees, it's 5 times 30. 30 degrees is pi by 6. So 150 degrees is 5 pi by 6. 60 degrees in radians is pi by 3. 120 degrees is double of 60. So that would be 2 pi by 3 and so on. The first example. For the first three example, theta lies between 0 and 360. Again, we are dealing with radians. So instead of 360, this is 2 pi. Sine theta is equals to 0 0.5. Sine is positive. That means it's the first and the second quadrant. Nothing to do with the modification of range. Basic angle. Always make a habit of writing. Let alpha be the basic angle. Notify the examiner what exactly you are trying to do. Let alpha be the basic angle. Sine alpha is 0.5. Therefore, alpha is 30 degrees in radians in terms of pi. That is pi by 6. Theta is pi by 6. First quadrant. Theta is pi minus pi by 6. That is the second quadrant. Simplify and write down the your answer. Let's look at work example 2. Cosine 2 theta is negative 0.5. Negative simply denotes the quadrants have changed. Instead of first and fourth, where cosine is positive, it will be second and third. Second thing, since the range is between 0 and 2 pi, and over here, it's written 2 pi, so you have to modify the range. Whatever you do on the inside, you do it on the outside also. Basic angle is always calculated with a positive ratio. So basic angle comes out to be pi by 3. Now since between 0 to 360, there were two answers. Additional two answers would also come because a new revolution has been added. 2 theta equals to, in the second quadrant, theta minus the, pi minus the basic angle. Third quadrant, pi plus the basic angle, which is shown by this red 
diagram over here. This red angle over here, that is the angles in the first quadrant. Since you are going one more revolution, that is the blue angle. How do you arrive at the same destination again? You add 2 pi 360 degrees, you add 2 pi 360 degrees. Since you are working in radians, so you are adding 2 pi. So the first answer, the second answer, the third answer by adding 2 pi to the first, the fourth answer by adding 2 pi to the next, and then making theta the subject. So these are the four final answers in this particular example. Third example, again it's in terms of pi. Sine 2 theta plus pi by 6 is root 3 over 2. Root as it is when it's written, since that it's taken from a triangle, the lengths of trigonometric ratios are taken from a triangle. Since that dimension is positive, so you would only assign a positive sign itself. It's in the first and the second quadrant. Range is modified. Now the modified range lies between pi by 6 and 4 pi plus pi by 6. Basic angle comes out to be pi by 3. This thing in bracket, first quadrant, second quadrant, extra revolution, add 360, add 360, and then eventually you have to do the working in fractions, and then make theta the subject. These are the final four answers. Now the first three examples were about the type 1 questions in which all the angles were in terms of pi. The basic angle in this case was pi by 6, the basic angle in this case was pi by 3, the basic angle again in this case was pi by 3. Now in the next four examples, we are dealing with such angles which cannot be written in terms of pi, which cannot be smoothly written in terms of pi. So that is why the examiner asked from us that we should work in four decimal places, four significant figures, and the final answer should be in 3SM. Do not approximate prematurely, otherwise you would be losing marks on your accuracy. Tangent x is equal to 2, x lies between 0 and 6. Now 6 is approximately equal to 6.284, which is 2 pi, which is one single revolution. So basically we are dealing with one single revolution. It's in the first and the third quadrant. The range modification is not applicable. Basic angle in four significant figures comes out to be 1.107. First quadrant as it is. Third quadrant pi plus the basic angle, of course in decimals. You get two answers. The answers are in four significant figures. Final answer, x is 1.11, x is 4.25, correct to 3 is. Fifth example. Sine 2x minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.8. This time x lies between 0 and 3. Now 3 is close to 3.142, which is pi. That means it's half a revolution. That means when you double it, it's almost one single revolution. You subtract 0 0.6 from the corners. Basic angle, 0 0.9272. This thing in bracket equals to first quadrant, second quadrant, First quadrant plus 360, that gives you this. Sorry, we are not interested in the adding 2 pi. The reason being, the original range was for half a revolution. So you are not going to add anything more. Because it was not like this one originally, where it's between 0 and 2 pi, and then you are doubling it. It was originally for half revolution. So since the original is half revolution, after doubling, it's within one revolution. So therefore, this is the answer in the first quadrant, this is the answer in the second quadrant, make x the subject, and then you get the answers. Now, for the sixth and the seventh example, let's first have a look over here. If we are dealing with the number line, and we come across such a question, which we will, in P1, in the topic of functions, in S1, in the topic of binomial probability distribution, if, for example, a certain question has an ending in which n is coming out to be greater than 16.3 after a long calculation, and the examiner is interested finding least possible integer value of n, that means there are many numbers, many integers, which are greater than 16.3. You have 17, 18, 19, 20, all the way till infinity. Among all these numbers, which one is the smallest? 
which one has the least value 17 now the opposite of this if you have an inequality n is lesser than 31.9 which is almost very close to 32 but the inequality is lesser and they are asking find the greatest possible integer value of n so anything lesser than 31.9 would be an eligible candidate so you have 31 30 29 and so on among all these which one is the greatest 31 now applying this concept to worked example 6 worked example 7 we are not interested in the integer value but we are definitely interested in the least and the greatest value 10 cos x plus 1 over 2 equals to 3 the range is not contained it is one sided x is greater than 10 and they are asking for the smallest value when we do our working by modification of the range by finding the basic angle we first get the first quadrant answer which is 1.2661 the fourth quadrant answer 5.0179 but our modified range tells us that the answer should be greater than the modified range should be greater than 5.5 that means the first two answers are of no use to us. They are not of any use to us directly, but of course they will give us extra answers. 1.2661, when we add 2 pi to it, this becomes 7.5501. When we add 2 pi to it, it becomes 11.3019 approximately. Now among these, this will give me an answer. This will also give me an answer, but among these answers which one would be the smallest the smallest one will be obtained from 7.5501 because this is just the very first number outside of this range outside any exceeding along this number line greater than 5.55 if i would have calculated this thing it would be approximately 22.6 minus 1 which would be 21.6 which of course would be greater than this 14.1 and a lot of greater answers would be there but what exactly is the examiner asking the examiner is asking for the least possible value so the least possible value is 14.2 the opposite of this question in terms of the number line 5 tangent 2x plus 1 is 16 make tangent the subject that is 3.2 first and third quadrant base modification of range 2x plus 1 is lesser than 9 over here it was x plus 1 whatever is in the bracket greater than 5.5 over here whatever is in the bracket is lesser than 9 that is why in this question the original range of values of x is x is lesser than 4 and this time it's asking for the largest possible value so now basic angle comes out to be 1.2679 first quadrant angle as it is third quadrant 3.142 plus this value which is written over here Again, these two are not fitting in my range. They are not fitting according to the standards of modified range. What should I do? Go ahead. Go one more revolution. Add 2 pi. Add 2 pi. This is 7.55 something. This is 10.69 something. Among this, this one will give me the right answer. Because this one is giving me 3.28 which is very close to 4. This one would give me something like 4.5 something. That is exceeding this range. So which is the largest possible value? In this case, that is 3.28. So now among these four questions of type 2, these two were the direct ones. All you had to do was to worry about the decimals and modification of range. But this la these last two examples, they were a bit tricky. Because in one, they are asking for smallest. In one, they are asking for the largest. So this is the approach that you need to take, that you have to write down the answers. You have to double check with the modified range. Since there is liberty, there is freedom to go ahead. You add 360, 360, yani, 2 pi, 2 pi to each one of them, and then you work it out. Okay, that's it.